Hi Taurus, welcome to your reading for September 2024. How are you doing Taurus? How was your August? How did you cope with Mercury retrograde, which was most of August, wasn't it? Um, you know, the kind of problems we have can be to do with communication, devices, contracts, that sort of thing. Um, I personally don't usually have anything significant happen. I had a few tech minor technical glitches this Mercury retrograde, but nothing significant. Um, I've had stories from people I know who've said they had, they've had people come back from the past, they've had major technical glitches, they've um, had disagreements, arguments, and people around them have had disagreements and arguments. So what was your experience? Feel free to share that. I did your pre-reading meditation. Yours was pretty um, fun. <laughs> Basically, I saw a massive table, like a feast. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen one of those like period films where the, they have a long dining table and there's shit loads of people sitting around it and there's just a ton of food on the table and they're all just having a good time, talking, laughing, drinking, eating. I don't remember music specifically, but the, the term feast and celebration specifically came to mind. So whoever that's for, enjoy. <laughs> that was the meditation. Um, so we're going to get into your reading. We're going to start off with a message. So these are the um, oracle decks I'll be using. We're going to start off with a message from the Witch's Wisdom. Let's see what comes up for you. So for Taurus, Sun, Moon and Rising, what do we need to know for September 2024? If anybody's celebrating anything, sorry, did I say September or August? I think I said August, didn't I meant September, if I did say August. Um, if anybody's celebrating in September, please feel free to um to share and let us know what you're doing. So Taurus, this is a very awkward deck for me to shuffle with my small hands. So Taurus for, I nearly said August again then, but it is actually September. September, right, water cleansing. I'll get the tarot cards for you and then I'll look in the book. So for Taurus, Sun, Moon and Rising, what do we need to know for September 2024? So we have the Five of Cups and we have the Empress. Right, one message I've got coming through just intuitively and this may only be for one person um is that there somebody may be celebrating someone's life um that's passed whether it is a funeral um an actual funeral a memorial something to that effect that's one thing that's coming in is that you may be celebrating in that way um yeah also, the Empress would be a brilliant host because she's very abundant, just overall, not in just in terms of like a funeral or whatever. She's very abundant. Um, and she, I think when you read up about the Empress, she's the one that would offer you lots of food and et cetera, et cetera. So she'd make a great host. I mean, it is Taurus, actually Taurus energy and Libra energy. So like the, a little bit of a social butterfly. Um try that again now because I've got distracted from that funeral type energy I'm not predicting anyone's death or anything I'm just saying that it looks like celebrating someone's life so it would be a it would be happy I mean it might be bittersweet if you're celebrating the life of someone who's passed but for the most part it looks like a happy happy occasion the word mem memoriam memoriam or memorial is coming to mind as well right so let's get the other cards out for you I feel like it was that one first. The Wheel of Fortune, the Sun. Okay, one more. Right. Let's look in the book and then I'll have a look at these properly. It looks like an energy of moving on from the past, I would say, overall, moving forward, moving on. 
It's just a general sort of thing, a general theme. Starting again even for someone. Okay, that's the overall. Let's get look in the book and then we'll get the clarifiers out. So we've got water cleansing. You might be involved in some sort of ritual where there's a feast as well of some sort. And a ritual can be anything. It doesn't have to be witchcraft related. It could like be a christening or because the cleansing's there. It could even be a christening, a wedding whatever kind of ceremony or ritual that involves celebration and, and eating a lot of food basically <laughs> anything um so let's find this water cleansing right so it says the element of water has surfaced to help you clean up your act you have been affected by negative thoughts doubts and worries allow cleansing to wash away any pollution that you are drowning in and release the emotion that is draining your natural vitality and positive outlook Water seeks out your sensitivity and asks you to tap into your feelings for you often become overwhelmed when faced with challenging situations and others' demands. Be aware of the difference between your emotions and those of others. Water can soothe, heal and help you to go with the flow. Water reminds you to bless this elixir of life before you bathe or drink of it and to acknowledge your connection to the ebb and flow of the tides and the pool of the moon. Water offers you to dive in and uncover your natural psychic abilities and to enhance prophetic dreams that you that that, that are ready to emerge. I can't speak yet yeah, saying it here. I was thinking as I was reading, um, if someone's an empath here and you are going to to a celebratory event, you may be worried about that or something, because if you're an empath, you might be picking up on everyone's emotions and it might stress you out a little bit or, you know, that's something to consider. And also the thought of emotional eating came up as well. So if someone here is an emotional eater, if that's having a negative impact on you, you may need to um, do some work on that somehow or get some sort of support, assistance, guidance with that. Right. The witch's foresight says... You are empath empathetic. Your sensitivity is a gift. Protect it well. You are experiencing new psychic awareness. That's a page of Cups Energy that is. Vivid dreams are linked with emotion to be kept in check. Drink more water. Spend time by the sea. Stop trying to go against the natural flow. Okay, let's get into these cards here. So what do we need to know for Taurus, for the Five of Cups, the Empress? That's like an overall the overall theme energy so we've got the star and the queen of cups i mean the queen of cups is a bit of a psychic energy as well the star is there so again i think i said something about moving on didn't i so that to me is kind of indicating moving on emotionally you've got the five of cups there and the empress that is moving on emotionally in general anyway anything else Knight of Pentacles, Six of Wands. Yeah, I think this is about moving on um, somehow or the need, if if not already doing it, the need to move on. Um, the Knight of Pentacles is like taking the steps to move towards. Yes, it can be success, but to move on successfully in general, like if you've experienced grief or disappointment, hurt, whatever, it's it's moving forward from that, moving on from that and like say if it was grief it's got getting back into life living again so the wheel of fortune what do we need to know about that this will be the past energy that's change isn't it three of cups there's that celebratory energy um judgment We have the Two of Swords, the Hierophant, and the Nine of Pentacles. Ooh, okay. This is going to sound really weird. Well, it's probably not that weird, but someone here could be celebrating a divorce. Um, especially if it was a really hard marriage or it's taken a long time to process the paperwork or whatever. Um, yeah, that's one thing that comes to mind. I think it's more so, well, the Empress feels like an independent energy. Obviously, the Five of Cups would be the disappointment. And then the Hierophant with the Nine of Pentacles, that would be um, going to, towards independence. So in the past, obviously, the Wheel of Fortune is a card of change. One of the things that I'm feeling here 
aside from the other messages, that someone may have been um, called to step into a greater sense of maturity. I think it's because with the Three of Cups at one end and the Nine of Pentacles at the other, the Three of Cups, it's it's kind of giving the feeling of, you know, like when someone's quite young and they can have fun and go out and do whatever the hell they want and not worry about um, just how life makes you have to focus on the stability and all that kind of thing. Having the freedom, I think freedom is the thing that I'm thinking of, fun and freedom with the Three of Cups. But then when you go to the Nine of Pentacles, that is more of a secure, stable energy. There's independence there as well. Um, so someone could have had a change in the past of having to, to move from being the, having that energy, the fun, free energy, to being more secure and stable and independent. It could also be in terms of friendships. I mean, there's a thing about, nearly dragged the whole camera down then, maturity with the Empress as well. So moving to a more mature kind of energy too. Um... The Hierophant can be like learning life's lessons, but it's it's an active decision to, to focus on being stable, secure. I don't know if I just said it about um, if someone was very social previously, they may have become more possibly introverted. But just I don't know if it's so much about introversion as much as it is about just focusing on other things to be honest you know like if you were the, a party type of person and then you you switch things up and you're more focused on being at home and nurturing your home or work things like that but it was an active decision that needed to be made it's like you can't give that much energy to both you kind of have to pull back from one to give more to the other <laughs> the word adulting is coming to mind adulting Let's look at the sun. It's making me wonder here if someone's, in becoming more mature, someone has lost that sense of joy that they had. Not to say that they're deeply, even necessarily deeply unhappy, but not. But you know when you, when you become an adult and especially when you get past your 30s and 40s and you have all the responsibility of whatever, life, kids, jobs, everything. Um, you're so focused on that that you can lose sense of having fun to a certain degree or having as much fun. That's come into mind here. Um, and the, a challenge for someone may be bringing that fun back and balancing everything out. But let's see what comes up here. So it's almost like, yes, you can be mature, you can be an adult and you can be responsible, but you still got to have fun and enjoy yourself as well. So what comes up for the sun? So this is a challenge here. So we have, we've got the tower. I hope you can hear me with the mic. I've got it in a weird position. We've got the tower, the chariot. Page of cups. magician four of pentacles let's look at that tower these are two very responsible people by the way anything else ten of wands and the eight of pen that's a really responsible hard-working energy where there's just a lot to deal with and it almost feels like, well, not almost, it feels like with the Four of Pentacles and the Tower. Well, first of all, I wonder if someone feels a bit feels a bit overwhelmed and stuck, like maybe they've got too much responsibility and it's kind of because of that they feel a bit stagnant with the chariot being there. Like it's keeping, because of all the responsibility they have, it's keeping them from doing other things like having fun and having new experiences um with the tower as well there's this concept of with having such a high level of responsibility and so much going on that you just feel like you're holding everything together you're keeping everything together because you don't want it to fall apart maybe you've worked really hard to to achieve so much and get such a high status or whatever however you want to put it and it's just like not wanting to um 
to let go of anything, delegate or take your eye off the ball through fear of everything falling apart. But you got to have fun as well. You're still allowed to have fun. Let me get something for that magician because he's just, that's the creepy magician, as I often say. Knight of Swords. So like someone's not able to express themselves fully or to experience something fully. To, yeah, opportunities, not being able to experience different or new opportunities or something. So I do think the challenge here might be might be that sense of freedom and fun, to be honest, because someone might have too many responsibilities and like there's a desire to kind of... I get this, I feel like I get this quite a bit for Taurus, if I'm being honest. Um, or I've gotten it quite a few times in the past, of feeling a bit overwhelmed, possibly. Let's look at the Six of Cups and see what comes out for that. So we've, we've got the Four of Cups. We have the Eight of Pentacles, the Eight of Cups, the Wheel of Fortune, Wheel of Fortune, Four of Swords, King of Cups and the Empress again. So this is like an external influence um, or external factor that's impacting things. And over here, Again, there's that energy of overwhelmed or whatever's being offered to you. It's just not not satisfactory and you kind of want to leave it behind, to be honest. Um, with it being clar with it clarifying the six of cups, it gives me the concept that this is something that's been happened a long time, happening for a long time. So say if. Say if it was marriage related and someone was feeling quite trapped by the responsibilities in their marriage and family life, etc. That would be why it's been going on for such a long time. Um, that someone, someone's been dissatisfied for a long time or stuck in something for a long time. I can't think of any other way to put that. Even if it was a job, say one of the reasons it's the, there's the energy of there of six of cups from the past. Say if you've worked in the same place for 30 years. Um, you were offered that opportunity a long time ago. Maybe you were happy in it once, but over time it's become dissatisfactory. It may have become overwhelming and you want to leave, you want to change. There's a need for, to detach is one thing. Four of Swords is detached. You've got the King of Cups there, the Empress there. It's a bit of self-care and honouring honoring how you feel, isn't it? So it could be, it could be work related, it could be family related, it could just be day to day responsibilities. But there's a feeling that it's um, as an external influence, it's been it's like a long, long term pressure or long term expectations put on you to um, to do things and to get on with it, basically, with the eight of pentacles. But the feeling there of wanting to um, to be free from that. Obligate. The word obligation comes to mind with that Six of Cups. Obligations, long-term or past obligations. Let's look at that Page of Cups because that is the en that's the energy of fun as well. So this is what you need to be more aware of. Well, the first thing I'm going to say is your inner child with the um, Page of Cups. This one came out first. We've got the Queen of Pentacles. What do you want is one thing that needs to be asked with the Queen of One Pentacles and the King of Wands. What do you want? Because the Queen of Pentacles for me can kind of connect to self-care as well. We have the Temperance card here. Ten of Swords there. 
This can even be as simple as in a marriage, if it feels stale or stagnant, just wanting more fun in the marriage. That's one thing that comes to mind. So Ten of Swords, the world, Queen of Wands. And I'm just getting the thought, this is just a thought there of, I just, of someone sort of saying, I don't want it to be so hard. I don't want it to be hard. I want fun, enjoyment, freedom as well. Let's look at the future. I think the thing to be very aware of is the right to have fun. I know that probably sounds a bit um, obvious, but the right to have fun and acknowledge the desires of the inner child. <laughs> but yeah, acknowledging the fun side that you're allowed to have fun as well. Let's move these out of the way. Even if you've got a life full of heavy responsibilities, you deserve to have fun too. And to make time for it, you've got to make time for it. So, um, future energy, please. Right, Eight of Cups. Well, there's a card. It's a card of walking away, isn't it? To go and find that Ninth Cup. So in the future, you could be making an active... Well, even if it's just emotionally, there's a decision there that I'm not happy at the minute. Things aren't satisfactory at the minute. So I need to leave that behind and seek more fun, enjoyment, etc. Um, this was meant to be the guidance. Am I going to take them? I'm going to try again. Well, first of all, you might be speaking up on how you feel in order to detach from anything that's keeping you stuck. But I'll try that again because I wasn't concentrating when I said future cards. So future energy. Well, I'll take that death. The way that flipped over was quite dramatic. So we've got the death card there. So it's change. Allow the change. Allow things to change. Um, allow yourself to move on. Move forward. What do we need to know for the Eight of Cups, please? The High Priestess and the Sun. Trust how you feel is the first thing that comes to mind and allow allow yourself to, to live that as well. Like even if you're someone that you've got a lot of responsibilities and you're sort of a little bit in martyr mode where you're sort of saying, oh, well, I don't have the right to complain. I've just got to get on with it. Trust that you feeling that you're not happy and that you want more fun is right, that you deserve that and, and allow yourself to, to let that be known as well and to do something about it. Two of Pentacles. See what comes up after that, because I have an idea what that means. Yeah, you can't just keep juggling. Whatever you have to do, the things, the responsibilities that you have, you can't just focus on constantly juggling all of that all the time and focusing on all the responsibilities you deserve to, um, as I say, have your fun and freedom as well. So we have the Five of Wands, and there was one more that came out with that as well. Two of ones, you get to choose. You get to choose what you give your time and energy to. You might have to rejig your schedule, drop some things, delegate some things, but you deserve to, um, to have fun in your life as well as the responsibilities too. So the death card, that's your guidance, which I've already kind of said, it's about allowing the change, allow things to happen. I think that one was last so there's the fun with the nine of cups so we've got the ace of ones ten of cups nine of cups ace of cups yeah what makes you feel inspired and what makes you feel happy you know you're allowed to think about that and free yourself enough to be able to pursue those things you deserve as i say your happiness you deserve your self-care allow things to change to bring that in Allow yourself to move forward, allow yourself to move on. So let's get some final advice from the unicorns, this strange unicorns deck, please. So we have space, not a planet space, and this one came out as well, which is not a yeti strange, strangeness. See why it's a weird deck. Let's have a look at these messages, see what comes up. So that one's 18, not a planet space. So it says, 
The transformation message says the planets align and the stars shine. The sun beams its light, the galaxy turns, the solar system makes its journey. Round and round in a flurry of sound and sight, look up at night, what do you see? It is a vast of, it is, is it a vast of em blackness and empty space? That doesn't make sense to me, but okay. Or is it a playground with room for infinite dreams? Keyword playground. The possibilities are boundless and the infinity of the conscious universe astounds. In that space of wonder, the planetary unicorn is found. The meditation says, look, in, look up into the night sky and open your heart. See yourself journey from the earth to the sun, to the solar system, to the galaxy, the greater cosmos and beyond. All this lies in you. The planetary unicorn appears and speaks. Listen closely. The affirmation says, I am wide open like a galaxy, as vast as endless space. I have found my place. And the action says, stargazing is a wonderful activity to open the mind to the vast possibilities of space. Lay down in the grass and look up. Feel the infinite possibilities all around you. Yeah, so if basically if you feel stuck, whether it's in a routine or whatever, um, open up to new things. And, and you know, that you know we talk about limit being limitless. Um, give yourself space for enjoyment, I think is a key thing there. Let's look at that Yeti one. So that's 31. Or allow the space for, for pleasure and enjoyment in your life. So the Yeti strangeness, transformation, your journey breaks into the lonesome wilderness along a treacherous path. And in that stark climate appears the one who so few have glanced at. It is a search eternal. Some say Bigfoot. <laughs> I'm laughing because I think it was two days ago. I was, um, I don't know if I was brushing my teeth or washing my face or something. And I kept on getting this image of Bigfoot in my head. And it's, it was specifically the one from the, the movie from the 80s. I don't know if the movie was called Bigfoot from the 80s. And who was it? Was it Chevy Chase was in it or something? And I kept on getting this image. It came up really strong. And I thought, what the what the hell? What is this? Like the first time it happened, I just ignored it because you just think, oh, it's just a random thought. But it was really strong for like a good solid five minutes. I kept on seeing this Bigfoot. I don't know if its name was Harry or in the film, was it Harry or something like that? Um... And I just didn't understand why I was seeing that. And then it's come up here. But um, yeah, so right. Some say Bigfoot, some say Yeti, some say law. But in that quest for the strange and beautiful lies so much more. It is not just a Yeti or Sasquatch or myth or man or boar. It is the peak of curiosity, the Yeti unicorn, adored by lovers of strange tales and adventurers, adventurers alike. Dare to be strange and bask in the glow of this odd yet wonderful light. Sit with the Yeti Unicorn and ask for guidance. Expect something completely outside the box. Further mysteries unfold when this strange spirit speaks. Why be normal? That's no fun. It says, I delight in strange and the curious. I am one of a kind. The action says, when's the last time you did something outrageous, something out of character, something strange? The Yeti Unicorn invites you to push boundaries and delight in the eccentric. Be free, be wild, be odd. That can be fun, can't it? And that whole thing of thinking outside of the box, you know, what's outside of the box of your day-to-day -day life and day-to-day -day routine um, to, to bring a bit of fun in. So I'll leave that there. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching the video. I'll be back in a couple of weeks for some mid-month check-ins. So enjoy your week, enjoy your day. Take care.